Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Death Valley National Park, one of the driest places on all of planet Earth. And just over a hundred miles away is a forest full of giant trees in Sequoia National Park. How can these two biomes exist right next to each other? Let's find out today on Outsider Classroom. <music> Death Valley might be the most accurately named park in the country. It's the lowest and driest place in North America and the hottest place in the entire planet. During the summer, it can get over 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. And the highest air temperature ever recorded was 134 degrees Fahrenheit here at Furnace Creek. It's around 7 a.m. and it's already getting close to 90 degrees and I am Definitely feeling the heat. It is starting to get very, very hot here. Well, the reason it's so hot is because the valley is a long, narrow basin surrounded by these mountains here. Those mountains trap the air, which basically turns this place into an oven. This is an air steel drum. Feeling hot, hot, hot. But things aren't just hot here, they're also very, very dry. Death Valley receives less than two inches of rainfall in an entire year. That's not even enough to fill up the cup of mouthwash you get at the dentist's office. Which makes me wonder, why is it so dry? Let's hop over to the other side of the mountains. This feels so much better. We're just a few hours drive from Death Valley, but over here in Sequoia National Park, it's like being on a totally different planet. Oh, is that an Ewok? Oh, nope, that is a bear. Here, parts of the forest get up to 45 inches of rain a year. In fact, during the winter, many of the park's roads are closed because of all of the snow. And while it's a nice sunny day here, it's not the oppressive heat like it is on the other side of the mountains. It's much cooler. That's because we're higher up in elevation, but also the plants keep things cool. So how come this side of the mountain is all green and lush and Death Valley is just so, well, dead? The answer is the rain shadow effect. And to teach us more about this is my friend, Dr. Vernon Morris. Hi, my name is Vernon Morris, and I'm an atmospheric scientist who works at Arizona State University. Uh, the rain shadow effect is a situation in which you have a very moist air mass that is moving along. It runs into an obstruction like uh, a mountain or a high mountain range, and it ends up dropping a lot of its moisture or most of its moisture on the windward side of the mountain range, that is the side in which the wind is hitting it first, and on what's called the leeward side of the mountain range, where there's no wind, the obstruction has blocked it, it rains a lot less. And so it's very similar to you shining a flashlight on an object. That flashlight's light reflects back off of the object. Um, you see the light in front of the object, but if you go right behind it, it's a little bit darker, even though there is still some light that goes around the object. So that's similar to the rain shadow. And we're in a place where the Sierra Mountains on the western side get a lot more rain and so you see something like the redwoods in the Sequoia National Park forest where there's a lot of vegetation and green but if you go over and onto the other side of the mountains the eastern Sierras it's a lot drier and a lot less green and it dries out very rapidly as you move away from the, uh, the mountain range. This isn't to say there's no life in Death Valley the park is home to several species of cacti and bushes. These plants have special adaptations like waxy skin to retain moisture and long narrow leaves that secrete salt crystals that have been absorbed from the soil by the plants. 
these adaptations help these plants survive in the dry, salty conditions in Death Valley. And while it doesn't rain very often, not very often is a long way from never. And when it rains, it usually pours, with thunderstorms dumping several inches of rain at once. These storms replenish the underground springs that support the plant life in the park. Occasionally, every 10 years or so, the storms really bring it and dump a ton of rain on the park. This results in what the rangers call a super bloom, when dormant seeds in the ground take advantage of all that excess rain and bloom like crazy. For a few weeks, the normally desolate hills of Death Valley are covered in flowers. It's a beautiful and rare event. The park is also home to a surprising amount of animal life. Coyotes, horned lizards, desert hares, desert tortoises, mountain lions, bighorn sheep, even fish call this park home. When you do visit Death Valley, make sure you check the weather reports. It can get dangerously hot even early in the morning. And when it does rain, it usually results in flash flooding, which you do not want to be caught in. And lastly, make sure you bring extra water, snacks, sun protection, a good map, and stay on the trail. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.